Hey there, welcome to the channel. I guess if you're here watching this video, you probably have a truck like this, F-250, 2008, 6, 10, 16. I don't know what all years this uh, applies to, but mine's a 2012. And if you've got a truck like this and you're thinking, man, what is that thumping noise under my feet or in the back seat going down the road, or you've noticed that the ride quality is just horrible, um, you're probably like me and you've climbed under there looking at shocks or other components that are loose and found a problem with your, your body mounts. So that's what I've done and uh, stick around. We'll be right back and I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. All right. Now, if you're like me, once you find something wrong with your vehicle, you go straight to the internet, start looking up, you know, others that found the same problem and how to fix it. And that's what I've done. The, uh, the cab mounts on these trucks, apparently it's a problem. After so many years, they just fall apart. It seems like Ford used some kind of styrofoam almost, um, body mount material on these things on six out of the eight body mount posts on these long trucks. Now, it's not necessarily the mileage, I don't think, that uh, wears them out. It's just time. My truck is about 11 years old, and I've noticed this going on for about a year now. So about 10 years, of course, after all warranties are expired, you can expect these body mounts to just deteriorate and fall apart, turn into dust. So I'll show you what it looks like here. Now, after cruising around on the internet, you figure out, you know, there's several options to get it fixed. There's a hundred YouTube uh, videos about how to fix these cab mounts, how to replace them. And I'm gonna go through all the options that I found and what I chose to fix mine and how I did it and why I did it. So the first is you can go to the dealership. Of course, Ford, they'll fix it for you. From what I've heard and been quoted, it's around $2,000. Um, they're gonna, jack up all the uh, the body, put in new mounts, and uh, it'll be the same styrofoam-based crappy mounts that you might get another six or eight or 10 years out of. I would not recommend that option. The The second most expensive option I found was, uh, I think it was SEG, SEA, I'm not sure the brand. It's a third party that they make silicone rubber uh, body mounts for these trucks, a, a kit, and they were around $700 for the crew cab. Now, it looks like a really good kit. It looks like it's a um, solid material. It comes with the bolts, the hardware, uh, and I think it was $700. Now, I thought about those, but I'm a little cheaper than that, so I found another option, uh, which is not the cheapest, but the next one down was about $400, and that's the option I went with. That was these Dorman body mounts. They look like this. The Dorman part numbers, I'll put them all down, link below. And uh, in a minute, I'll tell you why I went with the Dorman. Now, there is a cheap option that you can go uh, with. It's a polyurethane mount. And I don't know the brand. There's several out there, uh, and they're much cheaper. They're $100, $200 or something like that. And uh, after all the labor involved getting these body mounts replaced, I would not recommend using polyurethane. Those things are horrible. I used them one time on an old Jeep, and uh, it made the ride quality worse. Polyurethane is not a good material for body mounts in my opinion they're cheap yes they'll probably last a long time but your ride quality will suffer so i would not recommend going with polyurethane now why did i go with the dorman brand um well first of all the cost they were 400 dollars. you get them on amazon they shipped overnight i got a link to, to, below uh, my affiliate link, I'll show you every part number I got for this truck, it's 2012. I think it applies to 2008 through 2012, maybe even some different uh, years uh, before and after that. But the main reason, price. Secondly, it comes with all the hardware. I mean, every uh, bolt, even the captive nuts, okay, and the, and the nut retainers. So that is the main reason I went with this Dorman, this Dorman brand. Now I know what I'm going to get comments. I do every time I do a video on this truck, I get comments about you know should should have bought a Chevy, should have bought a Dodge, uh, Fords or maintenance. I, I agree. Every vehicle is a lot of maintenance, and the reason I keep this truck is I haven't had a truck payment in almost 10 years. So 
Uh, I'm just gonna consider this $400 in an afternoon of my time, my monthly truck payment that I only do about once a year. <laughs> so uh, that's why um, I have bought, I have owned this truck since it's new. I know every single thing that's been done to it. So uh, it's kind of sentimental. I'm gonna keep it as long as I can. And uh, this is just something you gotta do to, to keep these things on the road. When we come back, I'm gonna um, go over the overview of how to uh, fix this problem and then we'll get started and then I'll wrap it up at the end when I'm done. All right, as an overview, what the job entails for this body mount replacement on these crew cabs is basically eight bolts. That's all it is, eight bolts. Now you're gonna go under the truck, you're gonna loosen all eight bolts, then you're gonna jack the body off the frame enough to remove the old uh, mounting hardware, the, the bushings, and then you're gonna put in the new bushings and then replace the bolts. That that's, sounds very simple. Uh, however, from watching all the other YouTube videos and, and looking at the, uh, the Ford service manual, the, the job is pretty labor intensive um, for a couple reasons. First being, when the factory installed these bolts, apparently they're pretty heavily coated with Loctite. So they're not gonna come out easily. They're gonna fight you all the way out. And there's a very long thread. That's one reason. The other reason is this is what retains the, the bolt inside the cab, inside the frame is this captive nut. And you can see there's some slop here. This is just really light gauge metal. And what happens since these are seized up and rusted and been in there for years, when you try to turn this down, this nut will sometimes spin and open up these ears and then your nut will just spin inside the, inside the frame or inside the cab. So that's the, the, the other problem. Almost all the videos I've watched on YouTube of guys doing this in their garage and their shops are, they're saying you gotta take these out by hand. I don't disagree, that's probably the best way. Um, if they've been in there a while, but I looked up the Ford service manual specs and, and procedures, and uh, I'll leave a link. You can get a subscription for these vehicles that I think it's called All Data. It's not very expensive, and you can look at the actual service tech manuals that show you. So the, the Ford manual does not say anything about doing these by hand. In fact, it specifically says remove them all with an impact wrench. So that being said, it also has procedures for when these bolts spin, like I just described, inside your frame. And the Ford procedure in their service manual is to use a hot stick, something like this, electromagnetic bolt heater to basically loosen the, the Loctite, okay? So they don't say anything about doing it by hand. Um, and they also say do not heat the bolt from the bottom, from underneath the truck. Now, I'm sure that's uh, for insurance liability and safety reasons. They don't want them catching people's truck on fire underneath. Um, and that's what a lot of guys on YouTube are doing is putting a torch on the bottom of this under the truck. I'm sure it'll work. Um, it'll heat the bolt up enough to loosen up this Loctite and then you have a better chance of getting this out without opening up these ears. So. According to the Ford service manual, you just basically impact wrench these out without any heat. That's the first procedure. There is one uh, caveat to that is on the front radiator support area. Is the, it's called the front end sheet metal, I think it's called in the, in the manual. It says to put pressure with a floor jack uh, up on that core to put pressure on this bolt when you remove it. And that way, um, it, you got a better chance of keeping this bolt captive. So specifically says to use an impact wrench. Now, like I said, it also has procedures for if you spin a bolt to go inside the cab and in the frame and, and heat this up, they want you to use these electromagnetic tools to heat this bolt from the top, from inside the cab or inside the frame. And I'm not gonna do that, hopefully, I'm gonna get them out without having to go into the cab. But if I don't succeed in that, and I actually spin, or before I do try to spin these out, I'm gonna heat it from below, okay? I'm gonna heat these nuts from below, these bolts, I'm sorry, and hopefully hopefully loosen up this Loctite in the, in the thread enough to get it out. Now, my truck is not 
and rusty it's not been up north it's been in texas its whole life and it's not that bad under there um, so i don't know if i'm going to come into a problem or not but that's my plan i'm going to use this this is a uh, hot rod i just got this and i'm going to leave the link below i've never used it this is something i just bought on amazon affiliate link below it's 179 dollars when i bought it as of the recording of this video and it's a very cool tool it's a electromagnetic heat gun so basically um, you put that around a, a nut or bolt fastener and it heats it up cherry red if you want um, enough to break it loose and all that so that's what i'm going to be using um, i'm not going to heat it up cherry red in the ford manual it says 15 seconds now i'm sure they use a higher quality heat gun than, than i've got here this is a 179 dollar amazon gun I don't know what model they have in the Ford shop, but it says 15 seconds. That's the procedure. So again, I'm not doing that. I'm hoping to get them all eight broke loose from the bottom. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on them down here before I start. Uh, hopefully I don't spin any nuts. I will put the, the support with a floor jack on the front and put some pressure on that um, core so we can hopefully not spin the nut up in the front. And then we're gonna go uh, take all of them out. <clears throat> Put in the new ones and tighten them back down okay i'm going to show you uh, assuming i'm successful with this i'm not going to video my whole procedure here i'm just gonna i'm gonna go under the truck and try to get it all done uh, but the process is to remove all the the bolts uh, jack up the the cab off of the frame about three to four inches enough to take out the old stuff and put these new ones in and the old ones now when you're in down there trying to get these apart the original equipment, they have this slip nut right here, or slip fit, um, and that's sometimes I've seen on the other videos guys have done, they get jammed in there, rusted, and uh, seized up. So you have to uh, kind of pry these out. Some people have used sawzalls to had to cut them out all the different ways, but just so you know, this is how they go together. This goes on top of the frame, and it's keyed. The frame is cut to fit this shape and that's on the top of the frame this goes on the bottom of the frame and then you put your bolt from the bottom through the top into this captive nut up in the cab or in the frame so good thing that the doorman gave the i hope i don't have to use these but uh, i like they that they included them in this kit so that's how these things work now i'm going to go do it and we'll come back and wrap it up at the end. If there's any, if I run into any problems, I'll video the problems, show you how I, I uh, uh, got around it. But hopefully there's not, and hopefully we're riding down the road with a smooth ride after this. So stick around, be right back. All right, for this first step, this is, for the first step, this is the uh, front number one position body mounts. This is the way the uh, Ford manual says to do it. So you put a floor jack and you push up on this, put some pressure on this support right here. This is what they call the front end sheet metal. And basically it curves up and that's what this body mount is. The captive nut is inside there. So in theory, this support is pushing up on that captive nut and we should be able to get this out but you can see this one's toast this is what happens to these things it's almost like I mean it's not even rubber it's like foam terrible all right so in addition to the support here I'm also I'm going to use my electromagnet inductor and heat this up for just about 15 20 seconds try to get that loctite free so let's do that
it spun the nut. All right. Got to get into the front wheel well for that one. Let's try the other side. <laughs> two of them not good at all two for two just getting started here's the number two position Let's see what we can do with this one <laughs> method I'm resorting to breaker bar manually I guess all the guys on YouTube were right got to do it manually I heated that thing to cherry red hit it with impact it did not strip the captive bolt but I mean the captive nut but it just it wouldn't come out And ended up using breaker bar and then just manually cranking it out. There's number three. As you can see, this is the one that's rubber. It's not that styrofoam crap, so it actually held up. I don't really... Yeah know why they put one rubber and the rest of the other crap but see that one's still okay All right, the job is done. Now I didn't go video every single problem I had because I was really uh, trying to get the thing done in one day, which I did. It's been about seven hours and I had two major problems. And uh, I'll try to show you, I don't think I took any video of the major problems, but the um, body mount, cat, they all mounted up, everything's back in line. Here's the body lines are, are good. The major problems that we had, of course you saw at the beginning, these two up here, these two right here spun and uh, I had to take the front headlights out and put a wrench in there to to get the these bolts out, the old ones out and the new ones in. I had to keep the wrench. I had to bend a wrench. I had to modify a wrench to to bend it and to get it into that cavity right there. Hold it onto that nut, the captive nut, and 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 manually take it out. I couldn't use the uh, impact gun because it kept knocking the wrench off. So, and I was by myself, and uh, finally got my son to help, and we got it done. But. Uh, this was both of the front ones spun the nuts and I'll show you where I got access to get the best access you can go through the splash guard but that didn't work I, as well so I took off the the front grill there's four bolts up on the top and you just pop this whole grill off then there's three bolts to hold the headlights in pop the headlights out and the hole to access that captive 
caged nut is right there and you can bend a wrench and I'll show you the wrench hold on so here is the uh, the 22 millimeter wrench that I had to sacrifice to uh, get into that hole so it bent probably about a I don't know 40 45 degree angle so that's how I got those captive nuts uh, secured up uh, on the uh, radiator support here's all the junk the other problem we had was one of the rubber ones this one right here i believe would not come loose i got the nut and i got the bolt out of it but i could not get the uh separate the bushings so we had to cut it and i don't see the other one here um it's here we had to cut it with a sawzall and i don't see it here my son must have tossed it already had to uh, get up into the on top of the on top of the frame mount and run a sawzall blade in here and cut this thing apart to get it to get it separated okay my cheater bar i had to uh, jam this harbor freight ratchet down into this cheater pipe and that's what we use to to take off pretty much all of the all the bolts that's how we got them out all right so once we got all these out the uh, sawzall to cut off that number three rubber one as you can see here body lines are lined up all right here is the uh, installed body mounts this is the number four position you can see how it compressed up in there there's number three position and number two up there So uh, the reassembly was no problem. So once everything was off, we lowered the, raised the bed up, took the old ones out, or raised the, the cab up, took the old ones out, put the new ones in. Everything lined up, everything threaded, and everything is torqued to 76 foot pounds. And none of that was a problem at all. Um, I could actually use the speed gun or impact wrench to get them sorta tight. I didn't do, you know, I put it on low. I didn't do a whole lot of torquing on it because I didn't want to spin the nuts up there. So got it just sort of tight and then used the torque wrench to finish it off to 76 pounds. We just took it down the road and uh, everything feels real nice. Feels like a new truck. So at the end of the day, I take it back what I said at the beginning. Those guys on YouTube are right. Don't use an impact wrench. Had I heated them and done the uh, manual I would have got them all out, I think, the first time. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.